And the easiest way to get these rosemary leaves off of the stem is you wanna pinch it at the top here and you wanna, not like that. <laughs> it is time to get cooking. I'm Jackie Saldana and I've been creating simple and delicious recipes on my website for more than 10 years with my family. And now I'm inviting you into my kitchen to come cook along with me while I show you how to easily create weeknight dinners, decadent desserts, and everything tasty in between. I keep it real and most importantly, I keep it simple. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our weekly videos. And now, let's see what we're making today. What's up, everybody? Welcome to my little tiny garden that I have in my backyard. Today is very special because we are harvesting potatoes. They are finally ready to come out of the ground. And of course, we wanted to show you what that looked like. The last time we harvest our potatoes was earlier this year, and it was incredible. We were shocked. It was the first time that I had ever grown potatoes and harvested them and uh, it was wild, right? Do you remember? Yeah. So we're very excited to see what we're gonna find. We don't know exactly what we're gonna find, but hopefully there are a few potatoes in there and uh, we want you to join us. And of course, what do you think we're gonna make with our potatoes this time? Um. Well, it depends on how many we get, but for sure, we're gonna show you how to make our rosemary and ricotta and potato pizza. We're gonna harvest some of my rosemary that's in my garden. So um, my garden is my pride and joy, other than my kids. <laughs> uh, so let's harvest some potatoes. All right, so these are our potato plants. And I planted, I wanna say maybe like six, six or eight seed potatoes. Um, I planted them all across here, but only these took, and then nothing happened over here, and I ended up dugging out the potatoes, and they were just, they never really shot up and grew. So I replaced them with some pepper plants. So we're going to gently move around the soil, and you never know kind of whoa, <laughs> what's happening here. Uh, potatoes grow underneath the ground, and uh, they are way down here, but there's lots of earthworms in here and I kind of don't want to disrupt too much of the soil. So it's kind of like a hide and seek. We're going to find what we find. <gasps> what? We, we found our first earthworm. Cool. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to safely put him back in there. All right. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> no way. No. It's always such a surprise. Oh, look at this little baby potato. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Here we go. Look at that. This is so awesome. I don't know why potato harvesting is like emotional for me. It's like you plant these, you plant these little tiny seed, seed potatoes and then they grow potatoes. It's, it's wild to me. And I see another one right here. Look at how cool. And then this potato. So this is the top of the potato plant. And then there's potatoes that grow in here. Look at that little baby potato. <laughs> so cute. Perfect. Cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Grab it. These are like the perfect size potatoes. Look at that. You want to pull this up? So this is the seed potato that I planted, I want to say two months ago. So I sprouted it in my kitchen and then I cut it off the potato, I cut the sprout off, and then I waited a couple days. And then I planted it in the ground, and then it sprouted up into this plant. And then you can see like the roots that come off and they grow potatoes. So maybe this might have grown a little bit more, but um, so anyways, that's like how a potato is grown, roughly. <laughs> Super rad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what is that? What is that? I don't know what this is. This is new to me. A little guy, oh, there's, <laughs> look at that little baby, baby potato. Little baby potato. It's our family potato. That is so cool. Look how long, it's almost like iridescent when they hit the sun. Whoop, put your hand out. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, don't squeeze him. <laughs> Whoa, cool, no fear. Isn't he cool? You wanna hold him? <laughs> <laughs> no face? 
No face. <laughs> Look at these, harvested straight from our garden. All right, so let's go inside, give these guys a nice rinse. All right, we are back in the kitchen. I just gave our potatoes that we harvested a nice good scrub and now I'm giving them a nice good dry. They are fresh and clean and just look so yummy. We are gonna make pizza. We're gonna top our pizza with these potatoes. Potatoes are, I mean, one of the things that I wanted to grow first and foremost last year when I started my garden was potatoes. They're one of my favorite things to eat. I eat them all the time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Potato pizza, you guys, it's so good. I'm gonna show you just how I like to make it. So I'm gonna put these potatoes off to the side. We actually only need, I'm gonna say, like these three potatoes. Yeah. yeah, we can save the rest for a hash or we can roast them in the oven later this week. I love making my own pizza dough. It's also something that I picked up last year during the pandemic. And it has been so great. I love homemade pizza dough. We use the dough to make pizza, obviously. We also use it to make garlic knots. It's so easy to make and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this will inspire you to make your own pizza dough from here on out because it is so easy. So I have acquired my little kitchen helpers here. It is roughly around 3.30, which means we're getting ready for dinner. And uh, tonight we're gonna have pizza, obviously. Dan is with a client, so you might see us, um, you know, just this is witching hour for us. So we're gonna do our best, but we're gonna show you how to make the easiest, most delicious pizza dough. So the first thing you wanna do is get a mixer bowl or in a large bowl, and Mila is gonna add in our packet of yeast and we are using instant yeast. Go ahead. Perfect, nice pour. Let's make sure you got it all out there. Yes, I did. So one, <laughs> of course. You did it perfect. I messed it up. All right, so we're also gonna do one little teaspoon. You can do the honey. Okay. Honey, honey, one honey. teaspoon of honey. And this is what's gonna feed our yeast. You can also do a teaspoon of sugar if you're not into honey, um, but I love the honey. It really does add a little sweetness to the dough. Um, and then we're gonna use one cup of warm water. Now you don't want this water steaming, piping hot, cause that might kill the yeast. You just want it to be nice and warm. I'm gonna give it a little swirl here. And even though this is instant yeast, we're still gonna let this yeast kind of bloom and do its thing for 10 minutes. We're gonna get our mixer going here. Yeah, we're gonna need the dough hook attachment. Dough. So what we're doing right now is just getting everything ready in the 10 minutes that this takes to get going here. We're gonna need two and a half cups of flour. So we're gonna put our flour here. We're also gonna need, all right, we're also gonna need two tablespoons of olive oil and a pinch of salt, like a teaspoon or so of salt. Yes, that's the best advice my mom ever gave me. I'm gonna give it to you right now, are you ready? So when you're cooking in the kitchen, clean as you go. Can you say that? Clean as you go. Clean as you go, all right? I've got some kitchen shears and uh, I totally forgot to grab some rosemary from the garden. All right, so this is our rosemary plant. And Believe it or not, she started off very small. She's my oldest plant. She's the first thing that I started growing in my garden. And um, I absolutely love her. I talk about her quite often. She's so fragrant and delicious. And um, I kind of feel like when I'm not here, she keeps watch of the garden. I know that sounds a little crazy, but um, I don't know. She's more of a friend than a plant, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a couple of these sprigs and I honestly wish you guys could mm. smell this. It is smell mm. so delicious. All right, thank you, Rosemary. We'll see you, we'll see you later. There is something very emotional about this for me. I don't know why and I can't exactly put my finger on it, but last year it was the middle of the pandemic and it was a crazy year for everyone. <laughs> and I was like losing myself, you know? And so I didn't know what to do. Um, so I started a garden. Sorry, I've got one eye on my girls. Um, I started my garden and it has been such a reprieve for me. It has been great. You guys good on the crackers? Okay. <laughs> it's given me a place to be 
just me by myself and also a place where I can uh, have my kids come in and see how things grow. Um, there's nothing better than growing food that you can eat. And uh, because Rosemary has been fr with me from the beginning, um, I don't know, it's pretty cool. And she is so fragrant. And so look at these beautiful stems. So beautiful. All right, so we're gonna set her aside and uh, she's really gonna perfume everything for us. So in a bowl, I've got 15 ounces of ricotta, which is just your standard. And ricotta is a type of cheese, if you're not familiar with it, it's a type of cheese. It's very subtle in flavor. It's nice and creamy. It tastes great with pastas. You usually see it in lasagna. Um, and it's really great on this pizza because it, it acts as like the sauce. So this isn't, we're not adding any marinara sauce to the pizza. The ricotta is what's gonna hold everything together. Um, so ricotta is a little salty on its own, but I'm gonna add just a hint of salt. Um, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. And I like to do about a half a teaspoon of onion powder. <laughs> Sorry, baby's playing and she found her voice so we're very excited. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do about a teaspoon of oregano. Even though, even though ricotta is a cheese itself, we're gonna add, yeah, why don't you mix that? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna add in, I wanna say maybe two tablespoons or so of grated Parmesan. This looks perfect. All right, so we're actually gonna set this aside. So can I set it aside? Yes, yeah, set it aside for us. Thank, thank you. So our timer actually went off. So you can kind of see it's like bubbled up to the top. What do you think of when you smell this smell? Are you ready? What do you think of? What do we eat sometimes when we go to the mall? Uh, pretzels! Pretzels! It, sm not, it smells like soft pretzels, right? Um, okay, but we're gonna, actually gonna turn it into pizza. So we're gonna add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And the recipe on my website actually uses whole wheat flour, which is actually really yummy because it's like, we used the honey to activate the yeast, and then we use the whole wheat flour, so it's like a honey whole wheat crust. Um, but we don't have whole wheat right now, we only have all-purpose, which is totally fine. I'm gonna keep the flour out because we will need it to, uh, roll out our dough here when it's ready. All right, so let's add a little bit of salt. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And we need two tablespoons of olive oil. One, two. We are going to put it on the mixer here with our dough hook. And we're gonna mix it on low until a dough ball forms. Once our dough ball forms, we're gonna set a timer for five minutes and let our mixer knead the dough for five minutes. Here you see that it's come into a dough ball. So now, Alexa, set a five minute timer. So this is gonna go and knead itself for five minutes. And what that's gonna do is just really develop the dough and make it workable and uh, just make it taste really good. Hot tip. If you don't have a stand mixer, that is totally okay. You can do everything in a bowl and mix it with a wooden spoon. And once you get to the dough ball stage, you can just use your hands and knead it for five minutes and you'll be, you'll be, you'll be good to go. So while this is kneading for us, I'm going to start chopping up our garlic. I'm gonna take these little edges off. You can take the edge off. I'm not gonna use that little baby one right now. These, this is actually enough garlic. I never thought I'd say those words, but this is the perfect amount. So we're gonna run our knife through long ways. Yeah, yeah long ways. And a 
cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut, cut. Watch our fingers. Now we're just gonna run it back the other way. And get a nice chop here. Chop, 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 chop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna add it right into our ricotta. I will say this, mixing your garlic straight into the ricotta is gonna help it not burn while it's baking in the oven. I made the mistake of making this pizza and sprinkling the garlic on top. And what happened was it tasted great, but the garlic ended up burning in the oven. Um, so a great way to avoid that is to mix it directly into the ricotta and then that way the ricotta protects it from burning in the oven. All right, so here's our beautiful potatoes. And we're gonna be cooking these on top of the pizza, so we really want them to be nice and thin. The best way to do that is if you have a mandolin, you can like slice them really thin there, which I don't have. So you're gonna need a super sharp knife um, and you're just gonna go to town. So I'm going to cut them as thin as I possibly can. The reason why you want them as thin as possible is so they cook fully in the oven while they're baking away on top of the pizza. So just take this step nice and slow and uh, do your best. So the five minute timer went off, so the dough's just gonna hang out there for just a second while we finish up slicing up these potatoes. And you'll notice that I'm not even peeling these potatoes because the skin on this kind of potato is very, very thin, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you could use pretty much any type of potato for this recipe. Um, and so I don't know um, why, but when I was growing up, my mom, whenever she made baked potatoes, roasted potatoes, my sister and I would always complain like, oh, you left the skins on. And when we had baked potatoes, my mom was always like, eat the skin, eat the skin. And we would always be like, no. Um, but I don't know why. I, the, the potato skins never bother me now. They don't bother me now. And um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't bother too much with the potato skins. Our thin potatoes are just going to hang out for a sec. I'm going to set them off to the side. And on my silicone mat here, by the way, if you don't have one of these silicone mats, for your countertop, it is awesome. I do everything on here now. Um, so I'm going to just sprinkle a little flour. Yeah, just a little bit. No, that's a little too much. There you go, perfect. Okay, here we go. Woo, we're gonna clean off the dough hook here. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So Look at cute. that. Now if you see some of the dough kind of sticking to the side of the bowl, that's totally fine. But for the most part, it should come out in one full ball like this. I'm gonna put it on here, zhuzh it around the flour. Uh, yes, I want you to feel that. Ah, oh, it feels nice and squishy. Nice and squishy, that's exactly what we want. It's nice and squishy and airy and um, I will tell you this, the best thing you can do when you're making your pizza dough is to not use a rolling pin. If you use a rolling pin, it's gonna squish out all of the air and um, it's not gonna be as fluffy and delicious. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to kind of work it with your hands and you just wanna stretch it out. This recipe makes the perfect size of dough. You can definitely cut it in half and make two small pizzas or you can keep it all together and make this size. And then at this point, you can also break pieces off and tie them in knots and make garlic knots. You can make garlic bread. You can do pretty much anything you want with this dough. Can we try that? You can make, put your hands up. You can make calzones. Uh, hold your hands there. <laughs> Okay, good. We're getting kind of thin in some spots, so I don't want to break and make any holes. We got some olive oil here. I'm just gonna spray our little pan with. And we've got our dough fitted to our pan. Looks like it's gonna have a nice crust, which is awesome. Can you uh, drizzle with olive oil, please? Start at the top and go down. Perfect. Brush the olive oil all around. Okay, I want you to careful when you do this. You want to do it nice and gentle because you don't want to tear the dough. 
kind of like when we were making cinnamon rolls. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now we're going to load our pizza up with our seasoned ricotta. Ricotta. I'm gonna gently spread this around. And then, of course, you wanna make sure you leave about an inch or so. Thank you for the crust. Crust, crust, crust. I love pizza crust. We're gonna drizzle some olive oil. Perfect, that's enough, that's enough. Thank you. We're gonna season these potatoes with a little bit of salt. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Woo! All right, so I'm gonna just toss these in some oil. We should have gotten a bigger bowl, but that's totally fine. Toss them in our pepper and our salt and olive oil. Oh my gosh. All right, and now we're going to place our potatoes all around our pizza. I'm gonna place one here. Okay, okay, perfect. Perfect pizza. Yeah, baby. All right, so we've got our pizza and it looks delicious. Look how cool that looks, right? It's so different and yummy, creamy, salty with the potatoes and the cheese. It's perfect, but we're missing rosemary. We have our rosemary and the easiest way to get these rosemary leaves off of the stem is you wanna pinch it at the top here. Just gently run your fingers down the stem. Ooh. Ooh, and it takes all the leaves off perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roughly run my knife through our fresh rosemary here. What is better than rosemary and potatoes? All right, so you just wanna do a light sprinkling of rosemary. Da -da -da. You could also mix the rosemary into the ricotta if you want, but we're doing it this way. And I'm just gonna give it one more kiss of olive oil. And now we are ready to bake this in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. And it's gonna come out all golden and brown and delicious. It smells so good. I could eat it just like this, but we have to cook the dough first, so let's bake it. Does that look good or what? Look how yummy. It is perfectly golden brown on the side and the crust puffed up perfect. The potatoes are a little crisp on the outside, but for the most part, they're nice and soft, which is great. So I'm gonna gently take our pizza off of our pizza pan here. Look at that crust. It's nice and crunchy, but I'll break off a piece here for you. You can see that inside, it's nice and pillowy and fluffy. It's the best crust you can possibly make and it's easy to make at home. It is so delicious. We have a Mickey pizza pan. We've got a Mickey pizza cutter. I'm gonna cut through our pizza. Go all the way through. Oh, yum. Y'all, look at this. That is perfect. Awesome. Still super hot, but I'm like that person that burns the roof of her mouth when I'm eating my pizza. Mm. That's so good. See the crust here, how it's nice and soft on the inside. And the pizza, it doesn't need any sauce or anything. It is perfect just like this. We seasoned it perfectly. The rosemary at the end, you can taste the garlic. We definitely need to plant more potatoes so we can make more potato pizza. And if you have any potato recipe ideas, leave them for me below in the comments. I'd love to hear what your favorite thing is to make with potatoes. If you've grown your own potatoes, please let me know if you have any tips or tricks. I'm always learning. It's a little hot, so I'm gonna give you some of the crust. Can you blow on it? Oh. <laughs> Can you say goodbye? Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, friends.
Bye. We'll see you next time.